welcome to Thursday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where today, unusually, I am going to start with birthdays. And I'm going to start by wishing Shemroy a very happy birthday. Now, Shemroy is from Guyana in South America. I mean, the places people watch Cracking the Cryptic from. Uh, it is absolutely marvellous. And I gather Shemroy will be having chocolate cake today. So enjoy your birthday. And thank you so much for your email. And now the other birthday that I want to announce today is Testarossa. Now Testarossa is also the author of the puzzle that I'm going to be attempted, attempting in this video, which is called Knighton. And that seems to be a portmanteau of the words knight, as in a chess knight, and the number 10, which seems to be, uh, well, there seem to be a plethora of 10 cages in our puzzle. So you can probably guess what's going on. We've got sort of killer Sudoku with a knight's move constraint and just a load of tens cages. This is a very, very popular puzzle, by the way. Um, but there's a, you know, a, a sad story really behind Testarossa's uh, situation. Testarossa is Ukrainian and is in Ukraine at the moment um, fighting for his country um, and the reason we know it's his birthday is that his wife Veronica wrote to us and she is in the UK at the moment uh, obviously she can't stay in the Ukraine with her husband and it's it's an awful situation and we hope that obviously the two of you can be together again as soon as possible um, but uh, Veronica told us that Testarossa watches the channel um, basically to keep himself sane and um, as a distraction from what is going on. Um, and I mean, well, we're glad for any solace we can provide, Testarossa. And I hope that I hope that I'll be able to solve your puzzle today and you'll be able to watch that and take some enjoyment from it. And obviously we wish you a very happy birthday and I hope that the, you and your wife are back together again as soon as, as possible. Um, now, that's just a slightly sombering thought, isn't it? It was not slightly sombering, but typical British understatement. Um, what else can I tell you about? Let's move on to, to happier topics. Um, we have got the Nightmare Sudoku Hunt available for you over on Patreon at the moment. Here it is, Nightmare on Sudoku Street. Um, this is from the Skunk Works. Loads of you are enjoying it. Loads of you actually are managing to finish all 19 puzzles, which is absolutely terrifying. There are so many clever people amongst our supporters. It really is a delight. So very well done to those of you who've got through it all. I'll be reading out your names in due course, of course. Uh, that's a lot of a courses in a sentence. Um, gas number two, the gas pack number two, that is out. That is the way to learn how to do these rock hard variant Sudokus that we see on the channel. Take a look at some gas puzzles and they will they will get your brain and your neur neurons firing in the right ways. Oh yeah, and Mark and I are actually seeing each other this evening because we are going to watch Dave Gorman the British comedian, who's also, of course, a cryptic crossword setter. Um, I've, I've, I've tackled Dave's cryptic crosswords on the channel many times. They're always very good fun. And um, Dave is appearing in Dorking this evening. So that is where I plan to go and watch him. So I will report back tomorrow on how funny it is, but I'm expecting I'm expecting very funny, to be honest. Um, and the only other thing I need to do is to read out the names of correct solvers of last month's patron reward. This was Alice in Sudoku Land. And so very well done to Craig Anderson, Unthank Music, Jürgen Landry, John Garber, Joshua Rood, Lorenzo Marquez, Lorenzo, Loren, Lorenzo, Lorenzo Marquez, maybe. Esmeralda klein Sink, uh, Ignacio Cascudo, Rick Harrison, Neil Morstan, Ian Denker, James Williams, Nigel Gormley, Lorinda Brown, Andy Mitz, Roland Jago Duma, Maths Dodsworth, and Valen or Valen Smith. Very well done. One and all fabulous work. And now let us turn our attention to Testarossa's puzzle. Knighton, 
and let's see what's going on. There's, there really isn't, there aren't a great deal of, t I mean, I know some things about 10 cages and hopefully that will help me, but these are the rules. Normal Sudoku rules apply, so we have to put the digits one to nine in each row, in each column and in each box once each. Cells separated by a knight's move in chess cannot contain the same digit. So if this cell was a one, then, and it was a chess knight, it could jump to all of those cells. And if this was a one, then we couldn't put a one in any of these cells because to do so would render your ones a knight's move apart. And that's not allowed. We can't put any digits within a knight's move of themselves. Um, in each cage, digits cannot repeat and must sum to 10. So what we can't do is something like that because this, although these ones don't seem to see each other through normal Sudoku rules, they aren't in the same row, column or box. They are in the same cage and that's jolly naughty of us. So we mustn't do that. Um, and yeah, we've just got to make sure the digits sum to 10. Do have a go at the puzzle. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. And now I get to play. Let's get cracking. Now, my first thought here is that there are not many ways of making three different digits sum to 10. There are, let's think about it. There's 712, 613, and then 514 or 523. So there are four ways of doing it. That's it with, with, with if, if you can't repeat a digit, that is it. So, um, I think what we're being asked to do sort of tacitly here is to work out <laughs> which flavors of those, so let, actually let's write them down here. So we've got one, two, seven, one, three, six, one, four, five, and two, three, five. So the only one that doesn't have a one in it is this one. And right, I know what this is going to be. This is going to be the fact that Yeah, if you compare any two of these, they have to share a digit. And one way of seeing that, actually, is to think about the triangular number for six, believe it or not, because the triangular number for six is 21. So that's six plus five plus four plus three plus two plus one. So we know that if we're going to sum six different digits together, we will get at least 21. So how could... How could those six digits all be different? They couldn't be. So there is a repeat. There is a repeat in these cages. Yeah, okay. And I think That's very interesting. I can see how that works. Right, but I've had another thought. <laughs> My brain is firing thoughts at me. I suppose that's a good thing. Um, is it... Yeah, okay. So one thing I think we should start with is let's start with the very basics. Are any of these 10 cages the same? So if one of these was one, four, five, say, could either of these other two cages be one, four, five? And I think the answer to that is clearly no. And that's because this cage, if we think about whether it could be mimicked uh, here, well, no, it couldn't be because those four digits would have to be selected from three different numbers, the numbers one, four, and five. So this is clearly different from this. And this is clearly different from that because there would be five digits selected from three digits in that column. Now this one, we've proved it's different from that. Is it definitely different from this? Again, yes it is, because there are four different digits in the same row that would have to be selected from just three different numbers. So these, these cages are all different, and therefore, you know what I'm going to do. I'm going to color them. Um, I'm going to use my patented fluorescent green. And this one we shall make, um, well, the choice is, the choice I think is blue or yellow. That's the only reasonable outcome. So let's go for yellow. There we go. That feels... Oh, I probably should have gone for Ukrainian colours, shouldn't I? Oh, well, if that one turns out to be different, we'll make that... Isn't it blue and yellow? Ukrainian flag? I'm not sure. 
Um, so, but we can, if, if that one turns out to be different from these, we will make that one blue. Now, let's think again. Right, so now I want to come back. To, let's look at yellow and purple together, where we know that these are different combinations, but we know that the combinations must share a digit. They can't share two digits, because if they share two digits, they will share three digits axiomatically. <laughs> you know, if one of these was, I don't know, if this one was two, three, five, and then we try and put two and three into that one, the other digit will be a five. Hopefully that's fairly obvious. So where is the repeated digit? And this is interesting because that cell sees the whole of the purple. So that's not the repeated digit. This cell sees the whole of the purple because of the knight's move. So that one is the repeated digit. So we're going to label that one. We'll label that with A. And it, A, must be there. So this digit is a repeated digit, which means that it is 1, 2, 3. Ah, it's not 4. That's weird, because it could be 5. That's... Yeah, okay, I can, I mean, I can see that when I think about it. It's just surprising, it just surprises me there's a gap. And the four can't, because, because you're then left with six, aren't you, if you put a four in a cage. But you can't do another four and a two, so you have to do one and five. So, so if you put a four in a ten cage, there's only one way of making the ten cage, which for some reason surprises me. Um, anyway, that's by the by. What is the repeated digit between green and purple? And the answer to that is neither of these can repeat, can they? Because they see, they both see the whole of purple. So it must be this one, which we will therefore make B. And B must repeat there. There we go. <laughs> now, what's the common digit between green and yellow then? Uh, that's it's not this uh... yeah oh, that's really clever that's really clever okay so it's not this one because that sees the whole of yellow it's not B because B is here and that sees the whole of yellow so it's that one which of course is therefore C and C goes here uh, this is so clever it's really cute isn't it that you can actually label all of the all of the repeating digits. So A, B, and C are all different. So the repeating digits are all different. That probably shouldn't surprise me. Okay, and we're only selecting repeating digits from one, two, three, and five. Now, okay, so. So then the question is, what is this color? The, well, I can tell you this is not yellow. <laughs> I know that's not very much, but that cell sees the whole of yellow because of the night's move constraint. So this can't be yellow flavored. Um, okay, can it be purple flavored? I don't know about that. Let's just think about that for a second. If it's purple flavoured, it has to have A and B in it. And the A in it couldn't be in those squares. So that would have to be A. And that would have to be B. Ah, and that doesn't work. Good grief. Right. Okay. So it's not purple flavoured. Because were it to be purple flavoured, we've proved A and B exist in purple. So because of the knight's move, that would be A. Because of Sudoku, this would be B, but that means those two digits are in the same row and they would be the same digit. So it is not purple. That's rather good. So let's see if we can move. Let's see if we can make it blue by refuting greenliness in this cage. So that digit would have to be the same as that digit, wouldn't it? Um, oh, oh, hang on, C. No, oh, it's easy. It's easy. It's much easier than I was expecting. Um, green has a c in it and that's a c so it's not green so it is blue there we go um a bit of a bit of a ukrainian situation going along in the middle of the grid 
Right, so this... So this is the fourth flavour. Sorry, and I'm just thinking. Um, okay, so what do we do? We have to we have to identify a common digit between blue and yellow because there must be one. Otherwise, these six cells would add up to more than more than twenty. Now that it's right, that's not the repeating digit, and actually that's not the repeating digit either, because that digit sees the whole of that that cage because of the knight's move. So A is the repeating digit. So there is an A there. There is an A there. It's just that this is this is still not whatever we thought. It's not it's not going to be this one, is it? So Right, so there's now no B. There's no B in here, because if there was a B in here, we know that this would be purple. Right, ah, I've got it. Right, that's, this is lovely. It's really, really interesting. Okay, so there's no B in here, but we know there's a common digit between green and blue. Well, what's that common digit? We know it can't be C because C is already in box 5. So it must be that digit, which therefore gets labelled D, and D must go there. So, so do we do Sudoku now, maybe? A is in one of those. It can't be here by reference to the knight's move. D, ah... Uh, D is also in one of those. C is in one of these. What about B? Ah, no, B, B, B is coming towards my combinations down here. A is up here. Um... Ah... Okay, so this is green. Uh, I have to say, Testarossa, this is a beautiful puzzle so far. It really is. The logic is so, it's so satisfying. Yeah, look, you can't put A in that 10 cage. And we, but we know these are the four flavours. And the only one that doesn't have A in it is the green one. So that's got to be green, which means it has got B, C and D in it in some order. I don't really know what we can do that, I suppose. That's a B, C, D, triple. Um, which means, I guess, that D, which can't go there by knight's move, is now in one of these squares. C is in one of these squares. And B... Well, I don't know if we know about B. B... B by Sudoku is not there. That B sees that cell. And B, okay, and B is not in blue because we know that if B was in blue, then that digit and that digit would be the same. So actually, B is in one of two places. Which... which is beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. Right, I can do this. That cannot be B. I think. Because if that's B, we've got B's here, B here. This couldn't be B by Knight's move. So B would be in one of those two cells in box eight. But, but these two cells contain B, apparently, from something I've done earlier. And there's a, you know, it's a classic knight's move trick, isn't it? If you try and put B in either of these, you'll wipe out both of those because of the knight's move. If that was a B, that can't be B by Sudoku, and that can't be B by knight's move, and it works the same for this cell. So that's not B. So this is B, oh, which is just sort of already known. No. Ah, right, so B is now 
one of those cells. There's another classic trick. If you ever get this pattern, um, let me just highlight that for a moment. If you ever get that pattern um, for pencil marks with, with digits in night smooth Sudoku, always remember that one of those is now B. And the way to prove that to yourself is to imagine what happens if neither of these were B. If neither of these were B, this would be a B, and then this would be a B, and they would be a night's move away from each other. So there's there's definitely a B in one of those now. I'm going to highlight that just to, to remind myself of that. So B is not over there for what that's worth. Now, right, so B by Sudoku is not there. So B is in one of these two cells. So B is not in there anymore. Okay, but B, so can, ah, can, we, can, we, can we label this one now then? If it's not got B in it, it's not purple and it's not green. So this is, ah, that's beautiful, it's yellow. This is yellow because it can't be blue because that cell is in blue and it is ruled out of all of those by the night smooth constraint. So that can't be, because it's not got B in it, it can't be green, it can't be purple, so it is yellow. And yellow has A and C in it, so that is A now. A can't be here. This is just absolutely stunning. It's stunning. Now C can't be here. So this is A and C, and those two digits are the same which means we have to label them E, of course. And then E, oh, come on. E, where does E go in the middle box? By Knight's Move, well, Sudoku, Knight's Move Trickery Pokery, E is there. So E is now one of these. Yeah, probably that's what we're going to do. Are we going to have to do a whole... I've got an ace. I've got an ace cage. <laughs> I've got an ace cage here. What other what other words could we come up with? We could get a gab cage there. Or fab. A fab cage. Oh, I've got, I'm just doing that. That's just forced. That's an F. So I've got a fab cage and an ace cage. So... So the f, the f, the f, the f, you know what I mean, the f in this, in this box is not there and it's not here by night's move and we know it doesn't go in the blue cage because we can't have two digits in common between two different colored cages without the third digit also being in common. So F is in one of these three cells which means F is in, that means I've got an FB pair, believe it or not, here. This is now a BF, a boyfriend pair. Okay, and we know that B and F are those two digits. So that's, I don't know whether to lay, I could purplify those, couldn't I? Is that a sensible thing to do? I'm not sure. Uh, okay. Let me think. Hang on a minute. Sorry. Um, now. Obviously, I've got to give this a letter as well, which looks like it's going to be G to make a gad or a dag. And then G is going to be over here, and G is going to be in one of those two cells. Um, sorry, I'm, not, I'm sort of a bit unsure. A, B, C, D, E, F. So I've got G... G, H, and I to fill in. But this cell, that cell's the natural G, isn't it? 
I can't make any. I could make an aid, AID, but no, I'm going to make G there. So that's G. Oh, I see. Oh, no, that's good. That's good. Right. So where does G go in this box? Now, it's not there. We know it's not A. We know it's not F. We know it's not B. And it can't go there. And it can't go there. So that's G. So G is over here. Which is potentially interesting. So I've got A, B, C, D, E, F, G. So I've sort of, sort of hypothesized or hypothecated all of the digits into the appropriate place. Um, how do I do this then? Am I... I might have to use these other 10 cages somehow. I mean, I'm no doubt I will have to at some point. I'm just, just not quite spotting the next step. When I say not quite spotting, that's um, euphemistic. This is definitely... Oh, hang on, is that definitely B? I've got Bs down here. Why, do I, why have I got a B here? Why is that a B? Oh no, that's the work I did before. I proved that wasn't B. So if that's B, that's definitely not F. That's definitely B. So that's definitely not B. Ah, look, there is some more, more to be done here. There is some more to be done. So now... Can we do more? If that's B, that's not B. C is down here, D is down here, <laughs> I don't know, um, let's go back to our combinations and think about those again, oh Simon, right, sorry, sorry, okay there's an obvious point here, what is the only digit that appears in three different combinations, one, one is the only digit so there's and there's the a is the digit that appears in three different combinations of colors so a is one in this puzzle um, we're going to get loads of digits now so all of those are one i see so this is two three five b c and d are two three and five b c d are two three and five B, C, and D, two, three, and five. Let's put those in. B, C, and D are two, three, and five. So A is one. So we could get rid of A up here and replace it with a one, a one corner mark. I've not placed one in this box. I've not placed one down here. Oh, hang on. Right, one is in one of those three cells by Sudoku and a bit of Knight's Move Jiggery Pokery. Sometimes with Knight's Move puzzles, it can definitely be worth sort of extensive corner, corner marking. Right, so I see. So now I should be thinking about I should be thinking about the spare digit as well, shouldn't I? I.e. the digit that is not 2, 3, 5 or 1 in these three cages. So it's going to be a 7, a 6 or a 4. Right, so E, F and G are 4, 6 and 7. Uh, e is 4, 6 or 7. This combination here, let's should we put it in. I mean, it is two, three, five. I think, do I replace that with two, three, five, or do I keep the letters in there? B. You see, we. I know, oh, see. This is this is complicated now. I'm not sure what to do. I'm not sure whether I'm meant to 
keep my letters or move away from my letters. I mean, what I could do is that, I suppose. I know, I know what I do. I know what I do. I will go, I will put B, C and D in the corners there. And I will put two, three and five in the center. So it's a very busy section of cells, but at least I think I can see what's going on. And I know that's not B because of the knight's move constraint. Right, so this 10 cage is not 2, 8 or 3, 7. So this is either 1, 9 or 4, 6. What's E? E is 4, 6 or 7. Wow, okay, so if you could prove that E, if you could prove E was a 4 or a 6, it would not be in this cage here, and that would force that cage to be a one or a nine. Which would be useful. Oh, hang on. Hang on, I've got E and F in this square, but I've only got one E in the box, so that's that's got to be the E. <laughs> this is very confusing. So if that's the E, that is the F then. So E and F are what? E and F are four, six, sevens. Okay, four, six, seven into those squares. So I've got a four, six, seven triple here. How do I get the two, three, five triple in here? Have I got it? Is that it? Yes, I have. Okay, I have got it. Ah, ah, so I've got an eight, nine pair in the central box. And now where does that? Oh, no, it doesn't work. Oh, I was about to get very excited about that. Oh, is that is that G? Is that really a G? What's what is G? G is that cell. Oh, that is right. Yes, that is right. Okay, that's four, six or seven. So now that digit's got to go there. Ah, so this this needs its own letter or color, I suppose. Well, okay, let's do color. Let's do color. Those two have to be the same, and these two have to be the same. By now, Sudoku. That's the oh, <laughs> that's the only digit we could keep lettering, but I think it's I'm, I'm sort of going a bit crazy with the lettering. Uh, let's make those red. So now I've got red up here along with D, whatever D is. D is two, three, or five. Oh, so maybe I should letter it so that I can keep. Oh no, I've got a whole. I've got. I'm going mad here. I've got. I've got numbers, letters, and colours going on. Yeah, that. Yeah, you see, look. This box is sort of divided up into stuff, isn't it? In the sense that this is a D red pair and this is an orange G pair. Uh, so we could do something like that, although it's less than satisfactory. I think I am going to go, I think I'm going to go with letters. So we'll go with what letter are we up to? Uh, we haven't done H, right? They are going to be H. These are going to be I, and then we know that is an IG pair. I'll get rid of the red, the rednesses, and this is a DH pair. There we go. So you can see everything, everything is labeled in this box. We don't know the order of the BF and the DH, etc., but everything's basically done. So I, oh no, that's not good. I thought I was, well, obviously I is not in there, but I. Until we know whether I is 9 or not, we can't rule it out of here. Oh, got it. Right, right, that square. That square, look at this. It sees the four, it sees the four, six, seven triple in box five. That's absolutely gorgeous. This square, it sees all the four, six, and seven. So it cannot be a four or a six. And if it can't be a four or a six, it's a one or a nine. So this is a one, nine pair which means it's got A in it, although A is sort of defunct as a term. Ah, but now there's a 9 looking at I. So I is 8. Now, now here is an interesting question. Do I just replace I? 
is that is that really what I should do here? So this is now a G8 pair. Yeah, I think I've got to, haven't I? So I've got to go G8. And I, I think I just, sorry, I know I've only just put I in, but I think I've got to get rid of it, I think, because I actually know those digits now. It would be madness to to keep going with this if you know the digit. So, so H is now nine. So we put that in, and now we know that this is a nine D pair. So we can put that in D nine. And okay, so the concept the, the concept of H and I have disappeared. Nine. Nine is on top of C. Nine isn't C, is it? C is C is two, three, or five. Right, so that's a C nine pair. That's a C nine is a a sort of computer gaming term. Don't C nine it Overwatch, I think. Um, so that's C nine. So this can't be a one because C is not one. And get rid of the C in the corner. So this is C nine. Um, hang on a minute. Let me just think for a moment. Probably more than a moment. Actually, I'm getting confused now. I'm starting to <laughs> G. That's a G by Sudoku. So G is down there in box uh, box eight, the bottom of column four. Uh, oh, I probably might have to get rid of this soon. I mean, I know what they are. I think I think we're okay, aren't we? We've we've sort of we've understood what's going on in the puzzle. We've just got to put it into practice now. This is not a one nine pair. Oh, that's a B. Ah, so that's not a B. So the B is there, right? I don't know if the, I don't actually think that's going to be useful, but that is definitely B. It's not C or D. That's only B. So B, B, B is in one of these two squares. Now, can we? Is there a B in no? There's not a B in there. There's a B in one of these. <laughs> Ow, bobbins. Um. Okay, so so somehow or other, we're going to have to learn about the nature of the world. Ah, one is not there anymore. So that's a one, I think, in box eight. And one is, one was the A digit. Okay, so these are not ones. Let's just double click once, see if we can see anything good. Can uh, This can't be 1, 9 because it would break that square. So 1 is in one of three places in box number, in box number 1. Not sure if we can do much better than that though. Um, wow. Okay. <laughs> um, what on earth do we look at now? Uh, we know this is G. I'm going to write that. I'm, I'm actually going to write it in as 4, 6 or 7. E is in one of these. There must be another 4, 6, 7. Which is the other 4, 6, 7? F. Ah. Ah, I see. Oh, this is the naked single. <laughs> that's, completely that's completely barbaric. Yeah, look. Uh, e and F both see this cell. So we get an EF pair. And now in this box, we've got all the digits apart from eight, I think. That's an eight. Good grief. Which is a. Uh, hang on. I've got to put eight. I've got. I'm, I keep getting confused between the, the uh, numbers and the letters now. Look, eight is now in one of these cells. Eight is different from G, isn't it? I think G. Yeah, G was a four, six, seven digit. Oh, so hang on. So E, there's an E down here as well. Ah, and is that E? 
It seems to be. So E is in one of those two cells. So this is an EG8 combination. Now, that can't be G. Yeah, Where's the, where does 8 go in box 3, look? I don't know exactly. It's in one of two places, though. Ah, there you go. That's it. Now, look. Where does 8 go in row 3? Not here by Knight's move. So it's, it's moved... It's, it's in the 10 cage. The 10 cage is a 2-8 combination. So now, these two squares are a 3-5 pair, and they are B and whatever that is. <laughs> um, so B, oh, that's beautiful. Well, no, it sort of is. That's very interesting, because that means that because B is that digit and it's not 2, that means these two are a 3, 5 pair. And this is, well, this is a 2 and it's a C or a D. Ah! I, I, hang on a minute. I'm just going to be careful here. This is definitely a 2. But I must know whether it's C or D, surely. I don't. I don't know if I do. Uh, where, where? Which is D? D, D is that one. <laughs> C is this one. I don't know. That that being a two means that's got to be an eight by night's move, and that's got to be a two. I never label these up with. Oh, so this is eight, and this is definitely G now. Now, what's G? G is four, six, or seven. So we've got to put this in four, six, seven, and we'll we'll correct. We'll put that in the corner. So this is G. This is eight. This is not eight. So eight is in one of these two squares. Ah, I know which one it's in actually. Look, we've 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 forced eight down here. Now, if eight was in the ten cage, this would be a two. But we know there's a two up there. So that's not able to be 8. This has to be 8, which means that's not better. That's not 8. So all of the 8s are orange. So 8 is in one of these two cells. And one of those three squares, I think. So, so can I say that's not eight? That would make this a two. I don't think I can because that would be useful actually, because it would mean that C was not two. So that would force that to be D. So B is three or five. So that's three or five. There's definitely a 2 in here. B is 3 or 5. So there's definitely a, a 2 in one of these cells. I'm sure there must be a way of knowing, disambiguating C and D here. Which would really, really be helpful, wouldn't it? What about, okay, well let's do some Sudoku for a moment. I, I know I'm reluctant to do it. But there's a 2 in one of these squares by Sudoku now, because of this 2 and this 2. This is an EF pair. E and F are the 4, 6s and 7s, aren't they? 2, 3 and 5. Um... um Okay. Oh, come on, Simon. How do you do this? Do we... Oh, I know. No, it's simple. It's simple. It's this, it's this digit, actually. So I couldn't disambiguate it here. But this is gorgeous. Now look at box four and ask where two goes. It doesn't seem to be able to be there. And all the other cells... Oh, unless it's that one, D... Oh, it could be D. I don't believe it. Sorry. No, I'm wrong again. Okay. 
So this two is in one of those two cells. So, oh, that means if I could get the, if I could disambiguate the nine in this box, that would be another way of getting the two identified in terms of whether it's C or D. Um, okay, well, that's all very well, but I don't know how to do that. Let me think. <laughs> Let me think. What about... Hmm, I don't know. Sorry, sorry. I'm sure that there are lots of... Lots of clevernesses we could do here. That digit is catching my eye though. Because I can see that that sees a 1-9 pair. And it sees green. So... So what can it be? It can't be eight either. So it's either, isn't it a four, six or a seven? I think it's a four, six or a seven, but it's not G and it's not F. So it's E, which is that one. So that's E. Let's put it in four, six or seven. So E, E is the, E's are in these positions. So E is in one of those cells. And yeah, I strongly suspect that the way we're going, the only way we're going to do this is using this cage at the bottom. But how do we get down there? That's the question. Can I use these twos any further than I, how many twos have I got from, from all of my work? <laughs> Hardly any actually. So although I know that C or D is two, I've not, I know there's a two in one of those. Um, is this how we do this? I just don't know. Sorry if you, if you're, oh, there's a two in one of these. It's going to be some, it could, the other thing it could be is some horrible, like, naked naked position for two. Um, I haven't spotted that yet, though. Oh, bobbins, bobbins. Come on, Simon. We're nearly there, I think. Ah, there, I've done it. Right, it's easy. It's easy. Again, it's just hard to see. <laughs> There's a lot going on. I know. And the problem is you're going to have shouted at me about this, aren't you? You've all been shouting. And now maybe I deserve it. Maybe I deserve it. So, okay. Look, that one and that one see each other by night's move. And that one apparently is C. So that one is not C and is therefore, you've guessed it, D. And if that one's D, that one is not D. So C has become two. Okay, so probably, do we dare do this? We've got to go around and find all the cells that have C in them and write two in. Well, I'll, I'll start with those, which are big digits. They're definitely all two. Now, there is also, look, the opportunity to put a 2-9 pair down here as a result of that. Can we see any other C's in the grid? I can't see one. There might be another one. But now D is not allowed to be 2. So we can take... We can take the two corner marks out of D cells. Mathematics tells us that E is, e is 7. Right, so that's 7. So E is 7. E is 7, so G is not 7, and neither is F. So that's not 7. Which is going to be very important for the following reason. Come on, brain, think of reason. Um, 
ah, I thought I've seen something else. <laughs> I've seen something else. <laughs> My brain is jumping around all over the place here. Um, maybe I'll have to use that, the thing I've just seen. Let me just see if I can see anything else from the twos and the sevens. <laughs> There's definitely a seven in one of these cells. Let's put that in. So there's definitely a seven down here, but the seven is because it is, uh, I've forgotten, it's an E, isn't it? E, yeah, okay, so what we should do is take E out of here, because otherwise we're going to have duplication. So E comes out of these, and these, these gain the corner pencil mark of seven instead. Right. Now, so B is 3 or 5, and F is 4 or 6. Oh, look, F pokes in there. Aha! So that is B, and that is F. So F is 4 or 6, and B is 3 or 5. Is that helpful? Actually, it might not be. Um... Okay, the other thing I saw, the other thing I saw, which is really simple, is that that can't be 8 anymore. Because if that's 8, that's got to be a 2 and it will clash. Now, the interesting thing about that, though, might be where does 8 go in this column, which doesn't... Yeah, okay, that's got to be 8 now. And that took the pencil mark of a 7, which is fair. So that's 7. Ah, so that's 3. And I think G... Yeah, so G is now forced to be here, because G is neither 7 nor 8, so G is 4 or 6. This is a 3-7 pair, is that helpful? Um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It would be very helpful if I knew that was B. Because then I could rule out 3 from being B. Alright, let's try more. Uh, can we do more with 7s, perhaps? Because I... Oh, no, maybe not. I haven't actually got very many of them. 7 is in one of two places. In box 7. Can we get any, f any further with 7s around the grid? And what and it was E, wasn't it? No, hang on. I'm now now I've lost I've lost E was that digit, I think, and that digit. So So I should I should know what I should know what these digits are, shouldn't I? They're B and D, which is a three five pair. And something else, which I want to say is an F by Sudoku. Okay, it is an F by Sudoku, but I don't know anything about F apart from it's 4 or 6. And I know that, oh, I know B is in one of those cells, don't I, from that weird pencil marking we did earlier. So B is not there. Ah. Oh, that's... Oh, that's so nearly amazing. Oh, that's so nearly amazing. Right, let's let's just think about this in the context of this cell being B. So we worked out from this funny pattern of Bs that one of those had to be a B. Now that cell rules out all of those, that T pentomino from being B, because of the knight's move. So B, B is it what B is either there or there. Ah, but that's good. That's beautiful. Well, I'm not sure if this is enough, but it's very pretty. Because B is in one of those cells, let's greyify it, in box 7, neither of those is now allowed to be B. And that means that B is there, look. It's got to be there in box 7. 9 and therefore b is also available to us i think uh hang on i want to get rid of b so this is now b which is therefore oh hang on so that's not d or f anymore 
it's not D and it's not F. So do we get D and F? Yes, the only place D can go. Oh, this is it. This is it. We've done it. This is it. Because now D has to go in the bottom row. It's the only place it can go. I don't know why D couldn't go here. Yeah, so knights move away from itself. So that is D. This is now F, all forced. But D is now looking at a 3. So D is a 5. That is absolutely ridiculous. So, so B is 3. B is 3. D is 5. B is 3. D is 5. B is 3. B is 3. D is 5. So this, oh, that's 5 poking in there. So that's 5. That's 9. Um, now, Bs and Ds we're looking for. So 3, as we know that B is 3, it can't be there. So that's got to be B. 1 moves up there. So the, the danger now, frankly, is that we could, we, could, we could go very fast, I suspect, because I've got all the maths to do as well. And that should just roll out. B is 3. Oh, I haven't been looking for 3s in corners. No, no 3s in corners today. Um, D is 5. D is 5. Uh, yes. So D, D has only one place in box 9 now. Come on. So, I, uh, ooh, hang on, hang on. Let's, let's highlight all my 8s in the right colour. Yeah, let's do maths then. So, so now we know that G is 4. So G is 4 wherever we find a G. G is a 4, so F is a 6, F is a 6. G is a 4, F is a 6, F is a 6. Uh, oh, yeah, that, that was E. I've forgotten what E was. E was 7, I think, way back, from way back long ago. Um, okay, so this is a 6. Oh, that's a 6, 7 pair now, of all things. And we should be able to get that digit, which is... I'm doing that by Sudoku, I'm not doing it by the, the sort of ludicrous digitage that we've been working with. So that's a 6. Now, I think we might just be in Knight's Move territory now. Might be wrong. 7. Oh, there's a 1-7 pair at the top of the grid. That's probably been available for ages. So this is a 6. Oh, hang on. No, that is fair. That is, that's useful. Okay, so 6 and 7 go in. No, I was about to say something ludicrously stupid. I will try not to do that. Uh, okay. Now, all right, where's the weak? Where's the weakest part of the puzzle to look at? Perhaps this column, where we need 4, 8, and 9? So that square is 8 or 9, I think. Don't know if we can do that. These squares are 4, 8, or 9. That can't be 4. So the only place 4 can go in the column is here. So that shunted the 8 over here, apparently. Why can't that be an 8? Oh, because it's an 8 looking at it, of course. Right, so that's 9. That's 8. This is an 8E pair, but I've forgotten what E is. I think E might be 7. So I think this is a 7, 8 pair. So these squares would be a 2 and a something. 2 and a 6. It still looks like it's broadly working. So 2 and something. 7. So that's got to be the 7 now. Because that's a 7 and that's an 8, I've just noticed. That's a 2. Um, okay. There's going to be a knight's move thing looking into one of these pairs I've no doubt I can't see where it is at the moment but I'm sure that's what's going on all right let's have a look at the top of column nine where we need one two and six so the two goes in the corner and this is a one six pair and somehow I can't see what's reaching in here and fixing it but there will be something all right so those squares have become two five and nine now that's no, not 2, 5, and 9. Sorry, that's a mistake. A 5, 9, and a 4. 4, 5, and 9. That's very different. So that's got to be 4 by Sudoku. Sort of the, this 4 running the roost. 5 gets placed. 9 gets placed. So 9, 1, 1, 6 all get filled in. 
This square here is a 9 by the power of Sudoku. We need 4, 5 and 6 into this box. So the 4 must be here. The 5 sees that one. So that's 4, 5 and 6. That becomes a 6. 6, 2, 2, 9. 9 in that box has to live there. So the 1 and the 7 gets fixed. And in this box we just need 4 and 5. What a puzzle this is. What a puzzle. Yes. 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 Oh, zero. <laughs> okay, the clock didn't start. <laughs> it took me an hour. That's what that's the time that is showing on the um on my video length. Um and yes, I will accept I could have shortcut that somewhat by doing more knights move jiggery pokery and spotting everything in a linear way. But I'm I'm not actually um particularly embarrassed by that solve it it was beautiful no, I'm not the solve the puzzle the puzzle is absolutely gorgeous that it's fairly um I've just realized I'm going to get into trouble for not highlighting all my eights aren't I it's fairly um and doing that one it's fairly clear that you have to think about you know the different flavors of 10 cage and how that they can move together but you have to do quite a lot of thinking to think about the fact okay there must be a shared digit between 10 cages and how and where does that where do they then propagate around the grid and there was some absolutely beautiful stuff going on um i love the fact that digit couldn't be a four or a six because of where we'd managed to plot four and six in the middle box. I love the fact that you could colour every single ten cage at the start. I love the fact, and for probably my favourite, well the most astonishing part, was that that funny pattern there allowed me to pinpoint the fact that there was a B, a B digit down here. And I love the fact that I got three cell cages that spelt out ace and fab. So overall, Testarossa, that was absolutely great. I will say no more about it. I loved it. Let me know in the comments whether you had a go. Let me know how you got on. Let me know kindly how I got on. <laughs> and we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.